So here's one application area, which is a coupled thermomechanical, you know, has elastoplasticity of metal for this the steel girders in the World Trade Center 9-11 uh, attack. So for those of you who are aware, um, the failure of the buildings, the World Trade Center buildings, was primarily due to the heating of the structural members um, in, the, in the fire, the intense heat and fire. So they did a simulation. They actually meshed these I-beams and the connection, the shear connection, all with, and they focused on the shear connection because that's where they observed a lot of these uh, failures. I think mean, this is an example right here and here. Okay, and so they did the analysis. They have contact between here. They have um, the, they, their, um, the fire exposure. They're, so they're accounting for the temperature, the heating. So it's a thermal mechanical analysis and plasticity. Um, and so they have nonlinear deformations. So this is not poro mechanics, but it's an, an, an illustration of the nonlinear material modeling capabilities in Abacus. And there are various ones through here. Here's a concrete containment vessel blowing it out, doing the stress analysis. This is just displacements. You can find this online. They do a comparison. Uh, impact through a carbon fiber reinforced plate. Um, they model kind of just discreetly with little elements the, um, the composite nature of the material. This looks like it's mesh dependent, although I can't say de def definitively because it looks like these fa the failure is limited to long element edges. Um, the new version of Abacus has XFEM, the Extended Finite Element Method for Fracture. We could review that if that's of interest to you um, who are taking this class. We could review those capabilities and some of the theory behind uh, that method. So it shows a projectile penetration. This is a slope stability analysis with some reinforcements. It actually does this in Abacus Explicit. The reason it did this is Abacus Explicit has the ability to um, kill, to have what's called element death. Um, so if an element reaches a failure criterion, like a certain plastic strain, or its stress satisfies a failure or yield criterion, you could kill the element. But it's typically mesh dependent, um, meaning you make your element sizes smaller and smaller, you get a different failure pattern, different dissipated energy due to the failure process. For those of you who aren't aware, Abacus standard is um, an implicit solution method so even dynamically it uses like uh, I think the Newmark method or the alpha method a modification of the Newmark method but it solves a linear system of equations at every time step every iteration if it's not linear abacus explicit is a central difference in time integration of the balance equations so uh, so it's meant for primarily um, well it was originally meant for uh, high rate problems like high strain rate problems like automotive crash simulations things like that although it can be used for uh, for slower rate quasi static problems but it still has to calculate unless it has some sort of dynamic relaxation implemented it has to, which I'm not sure it does but it may so for this quasi static problem it needs to calculate a stable time step to um, to to reach the eventual quasi static solution this shows um, the simulation of uh, collapse or buckling of thin wall uh, curved beams. That's nonlinear finite strain as well as large deformations. This is a car roof with standard car roof contact um, roof crush analysis. Rolling of tires. It turns out Abacus, um, for those of you who are aware of this, these are the little hex finite elements. but. Um, what makes rubber material complex is it deforms in a finite strain context, but it's isoporic deformation, meaning zero or basically zero volume change. So that incompressibility constraint actually can cause standard finite elements to what are called lock um, and give you erroneous numerical results. So Abacus has some elements or some various formulations implemented to handle that mesh locking. And so they, they, they can solve this type of problem. Here's, uh, here's a porous material, uh, trabecular bone, although it's modeled just for the solid phase only, you see the bone, just the trabecular bone. And it, and it approximates it with these kind of, you know, kind of like in a Lego fashion, you know, put together bricks of 
hex bricks to represent this microstructure. Now, as I alluded to earlier, this is just a solid analysis. It's not poro mechanics. If you wanted to solve this at this resolution, at this pore space scale of bone, um, they called it micro FE, whatever. So it's just you need a, a like a coupling between a fluid model, like a CFD model, like fluent, coupling with this, and you could do that. Um, it's just that we don't have that capability. I'm not able to demonstrate that to you. So the poro mechanics that we're interested in. It's going to model this bone as just a continuous mixture of solid and fluid, and then model the effect of the fluid flowing through the solid and the solid deformation on the fluid, the compressibility of the pore space or expansion of the pore space. OK, this is something else which is not an abacus result, but it's a result I pulled off somewhere else. Now I actually forget exactly where I got it. But it's the simulation of the electric current density due to defibrillation of using applying defibrillators when your heart stops. And so it shows the electric current field as, along a certain plane with these arrows. And the red is these red blocks. These elements are to indicate a high current that could potentially be damaging the, the walls of the, uh, the heart chamber. And this is a shape memory alloy. There are models implemented in Abacus to deploy this in your arteries for clearing up uh, clogs in your arteries. OK, so back to this course outline. I just want to wrap this up before we start on the topic for next lecture. Um, let's see, so just comparison for other courses that I'm aware of. Currently in the college, there could be some now that I'm not aware of. In mechanical engineering, there's a course taught on biological tissues. And it, my understanding is it covers primarily the material behavior and constitutive modeling, possibly some numerical implementation, although last I checked, there wasn't much coverage on the numerical implementation. I should say, actually, the class I refer to at the bottom here, that class covered more of the finite strain constitutive modeling and numerical implementation. And there's no, um, so numerical, uh, let's see, the, the poor mechanics is, uh, is, is also not covered. And so aerospace has a nonlinear course, focuses mostly on geometric nonlinearities, not so much on material, if any, and not poor mechanics. Um, 7511 taught in civil is a broad coverage of material constitutive modeling. But my understanding does not go into as much detail numerically as this class and, and may or may not cover poor mechanics. I'm not certain. It depends on you know, how it's taught, when it's taught. This class is focused on small strain, nonlinear finite element analysis. We use Abacus. We also spend some time on, well, a considerable amount of time, you understanding how the equations are formulated, the physical motivation of them, and how they actually translate to a numerical implementation and the details of that numerical implementation in a program like Abacus, uh, well, first MATLAB and then Abacus. Um, and you'll do a project in this class. And then the, the last one is the one I taught last semester. The main difference with this class, it focuses all on finite strain, constitutive modeling, numerical implementation. So there's a lot more detail there. And uh, that's a more advanced class.